Hi, and welcome to the webinar, Learning Through Mathematics Discussions. My name is Allison Falconberry. I'm a, currently a high school math teacher. I graduated from Chapel Hill with a bachelor's in mathematics, and now I'm pursuing my MAT in secondary mathematics education at NC State in order to get my teaching license. I have been teaching for eight years. Um, and I'm looking forward to um, finally getting my license and enjoying learning um, through the MAT program at NC State. So the book I read for my professional development was Five Practices for Orchestrating Productive Mathematics Discussions. This book is meant for professional development for mathematics teachers. The authors were Margaret S. Smith and Mary Kay Stein. And I provided the link on the um, on the screen um, in case this is a book that you're interested in um, checking out at the library or, or purchasing. The central premise for this book was um, providing a, a, a guideline for teachers to use mathematics discussions in their classrooms. Um, they argued that um, mathematical discussions um, are more meaningful and productive and they last longer in the student's mind and, and they're more engaging um, so it, it's better than just your typical lecture um, to it's for the students and their learning. So in the book they describe the purposes of the five practice. What was the purpose in this? Um, and the, 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 the main reason is well math discussions are hard to implement. So the purpose of the five practices were to help with this. Um, some complaints about using discussions in a math class is that they take a long time. Um, sometimes it's hard to find things that are discussable um, in math, like you might find in English or social studies or history class. Um, sometimes it's hard to anticipate or keep the discussion going. Um, and of course, it requires a little bit of discipline on the student's part. Um, you kind of need well-behaved students who um, stay on task and can work independently and not, and not be so dependent on the teacher. It's more independent work. So that's the purpose of the, the um, book is to kind of help out with these things. So what are the five practices? Well, this is how the book outlines it. You start with a high-level mathematical task that the students can investigate. So some task that makes the students think, um, gets the students trying things, new methods on their own without teacher involvement. So once that task is implemented and given to the students, um, or actually before that, you've got to anticipate what methods the students might take when solving this task. Um, you got to kind of get into their minds um, and, and think about different methods they might use. Then you give them the task while they are um, performing the task. You need to walk around and monitor, kind of take a little peek at their work. What are they doing? What methods are they they using and, and make a mental note or even a note on a notepad. Okay, this kid is doing it this way. This kid's doing it this way. This kid has it incorrect. Okay, so you're monitoring while this task is going on. After the task is finished, you need to select particular students to share their work. So um, you probably won't want to choose the ones that have done it incorrectly, but I wouldn't you know, point those kids out, um, but I would maybe select students that have different methods. You don't want all the students that are discussing and presenting to have the same method. Also, you might want to sequence your selection in a certain order. Maybe start with um, volunteers, someone who is really confident in their answer, and then maybe as you work, choose other students that um, you feel have a different method that could bring something um, to the discussion, add them to the conversation. Um, you also might want to select students that did uh, more visual um, methods to complete the task versus students that use, used equations or some other type of uh, method. 
Um, so sequencing matters. Kind of um, be smart about who goes first, who goes next. And that way the discussion is constantly moving. And then of course, in my opinion, the most important thing is to make the connection af after the discussions, after everyone has um, presented a method, make sure you're connecting back to the particular standard that you're trying to teach them with this task. Um, so at the end, show how all the different methods and all of the different ideas that these students talked about and argued and explained show how it connects to a certain mathematical idea. So here's a quick example of a task. Um, this was used for fourth grade. Um, it, and the task was a fourth grade class needs five leaves each day to feed its two caterpillars. How many leaves would the students need each day for 12 caterpillars? So a pretty simple um, task, but it's great because there are many ways that students could approach this. So I've included an example from the book of an actual class that did this task and it, they used this method. So the teacher would be expected to think about the different ways that the students could um, think about this task or answer this. Um, and then they, he, he would implement it or he or she would implement this to their classroom. Um, you walk around, so you take a peek at Janine's work um, and see that she's made little tally marks and has written it out. And then um, you look at Kyra's and she drew pictures. And you look at Jamal, he drew a table. Melissa also drew a table. Um, but they, they, they approach the tables differently. So you, you're kind of walking around, you're seeing all these different um, approaches. So after you do that, you may say, um, so Jamal, you used the table. Can you come up to the board and explain how you got 30 leaves? And so Jamal could say, could show his table. And then Jason says, well, this is the way I did it. So you let Jason kind of um, talk about what he did and so forth so they start seeing that hey you know we're all getting the same answer of 30 leaves but um we're doing it different ways okay and maybe even there was another student i don't know george maybe george did it wrong but after seeing jamal and jason and melissa or whoever present maybe one of those ways of presenting it real makes him realize what he did wrong and sometimes hearing it from the students instead of the teachers makes it stick in their head just a little bit more. So after that, the teacher is expected to kind of draw back to this um, idea of ratios and, um, you know, bring it back to the, the standard that um, the teacher is trying to implement and, and even let the teacher embrace the idea that everybody was different and that there's no way or no you know, particularly right way, um, and the students should embrace um, that their ideas and, and use it in the future. So what are some arguments for these five practice? Well, um, there's an argument, there's debates going on in, in mathematics right now that we're not letting them think enough. We're not letting them think on their own enough. And a lot of 21st century jobs require that students be independent and think through things and use complex problem solving to to work through um, difficult um, tasks in their jobs. So, you know, using this in a mathematics classroom um, helps um, develop those skills. Um, and of course, the typical math classroom, sometimes you memorize formulas and plug in things. Um, so this is a different way um, to for the students to to learn math and a little bit more engaging than just a typical lecture style as well. So what are some of the teaching strategies in this book that I hope to implement? Well, besides mathematics discussions in general, which I hope to implement in my classroom, um, I learned that it's good for teachers to learn to ask good questions. 
So um, sometimes it's easy to ask questions in class where you know there's a right or wrong answer. You know what is what question you're or you're what answer you're anticipating. Um, but sometimes it needs to be um, better questions that are actually a little bit probing or rhetorical or that might um, promote discussion. So I'm, I I think that I learned to to ask better questions. Um, in class and, and promote discussion a little bit more than I do right now. Um, I also learned that I, if, I, if I do a little homework, I do a little research, there are tasks, tasks and activities out there that are more engaging and hands-on um, that the students can benefit from. So I hope to also use that in my practice. So to close, this is a quote from the book. It says, all teachers have the capacity to be stars. They just need access to opportunities to learn, reflect, and grow. So I think this is part of our um, the webinar. Um, purpose of this webinar is for um, us to learn as teachers that we have opportunities. There are webinars out there where we can learn from each other. And um, there are methods out there that... Um, ask us to, to reflect on our practice and to improve our practice and to grow. And, and as we do that, um, as we um, use those opportunities uh, to become better teachers, we not only are, you know, very impactful, um, we can also be stars and love what we do and be the best at what we do. So thank you for listening to my webinar. Um, if you have questions, um, please feel free to contact me.